Welcome to Evolution. My name is Andre Lawrence, and what do you do if you own an electric car like the Kia Niro EV that isn't rated for towing, you want to go on a road trip with a couple adults and some extra luggage? Fortunately, there are solutions, as you can see here, but when I started to look into it, it was a little more complicated than I had anticipated. If you want to know why it was complicated and what the answers are to the questions that I had, stick around, I'll let you know in 10 seconds. Now just before I get into the details about this roof rack and how I chose it and all the little details, I want to let you know as a full disclaimer, this is not sponsored in any way by this manufacturer. I did my research and I chose it based on my criteria and I'm not being paid, I'm not getting free product. I went, found the product, bought it with my own money. This is just me giving you my opinion on what I've chosen and helping you choose based on your needs. Now before getting into the details of how to choose a proper cargo box for your needs as well as all the little details as to what goes into choosing the rack, there's one very basic thing that you should know. How much does the roof of your car actually support? Now in the case of the 2019 and 2020 Kia Niro EV, it's actually 100 kilograms evenly distributed. Now this is something that's listed in the manual. I strongly suggest before you go out and do anything with the roof rack of your car is to look at the, what the maximum load is for your particular vehicle. Now there are two main reasons that I chose the Thule brand. The first one is because I knew this brand from having seen it and I've read reviews and I know that it's a good product. But the other reason is because I was advised by somebody who's been buying and using these products for a long, long time that when you buy this product, even 10 years from now, you can still get replacement parts. Now they may be expensive, but at least you'll be able to keep something that's still very good if you've only got a little piece that needs to be replaced on it. One of the first things I considered other than the brand was the actual cargo box itself. I wanted something that was gonna be large enough to fit everything that I needed, but I didn't want something that was so large that it would protrude over the front and hang over the windshield and something that wouldn't hang out too far back. One thing I actually didn't consider was the fact that if you get something that's very long and sticks out the back, once you lift that hatch, you'll have a problem because well, it's too long and prevents the hatch from lifting. So when you choose your cargo box, if you need to get into the trunk of your car, make sure that you choose one that doesn't have too much of an overhang in the back to allow you to get into the trunk. Now, for my particular choice, I have the Thule Pulse M, the medium size, and I chose this particular one because all the camping stuff I'm gonna put is gonna fit into it nicely, and it's got a 50 kilogram or 110 pound weight capacity. Now there are a few interesting features of the Pulse M that made me choose it other than the dimensions and load capacity. Now let me show you the first one and it's how the key doesn't come out unless it's properly closed as well as a neat party trick that I'll show you in two seconds. So let me start with opening it up. Now I've already got the key inside of it and all I have to do is turn it to the unlock position. And there you go. Now this has a nice wide opening and allows for easy access when you step onto the ledge of the car and has an interesting feature where you cannot lock this or take the key out until you properly close and latch the cargo box into its normal position. Now let me close that up and show you what the party trick is. So what exactly is the party trick I was talking about? Well, I just showed you opening it on the other side. Watch this. This case opens up in both directions. So if you're on the side of the road and you wanna unload the car and you're on the side where there's traffic, you're not stuck going into the traffic side to open your cargo box. That's one of the things that I really love about this case. Another reason I chose the Pulse as a cargo box for my car was the fact that it has a modern anchoring system. Now on some of the older models, the way that the cargo box will hook up to the racks is with a U-bolt underneath that's got bolts that go in. It's just, it's messy and they rust and they look like crap and it's more complicated to install and remove. Now this on the other hand has what they call the crab claws. Now let me show you up close with this other camera what I'm talking about. Now, if you look underneath, you'll notice that the case is held in 
with these little claws. Now, one on each side. And that is something that can be controlled on the inside with a knob, and that's how it tightens onto the car. Let me give you a close-up look at that. So essentially, in the top part, you've got this little control knob, and when I loosen it, it's on there pretty tight. So if I unscrew that, it opens up those pincers. Now if I do that for all four of them, there's one there and one more over there and one over there. Now if I undo all four of those, then that means that I can lift this thing off effortlessly without any tools. Now you may be wondering what exactly happens if the roof rails aren't lined up exactly with those little pincers. Well, that's the other cool thing. The system is fully adjustable. Now if I loosen this and it wasn't attached to the roof rail, this sliding rail here, covered by this plastic, which lets the pincers go through without dust and water getting into this container, allows this to move forward and backwards quite a bit. So that means that you can position your roof rails where you need them to be on your car and still be able to fit this cargo box on it. Now, just before I show you the actual roof rails themselves and the parts they're comprised of, because there are more parts than you might think, which is what led to my initial confusion about all of the different options. I wanted to show you how to take the box off the top of the car. Now it is a two person job, so I've got one of my three sons that's gonna be helping me. I've gone ahead and they've undone the pincers with those little wheels like I just showed you in that previous segment. And let me show you how it's done. Go. Just before I continue with this video, and in case you are new to my channel, or in case you've been following me since the beginning but haven't watched my videos straight through to the end, I wanted to let you know that at the end of almost every video since the end of 2019, I have bloopers and outtakes. So if you watch my entire video to get context, and then you see those bloopers, some of them can be kind of hilarious. I also wanted to let you know that I have social media links, and I'll put some links in the description below, as well as something up here on the screen for you to see what they are. I have an Instagram account where I post all sorts of pictures of EV and non-EV related things. I've got my Facebook page where you can ask me questions and read articles about interesting things related to electric cars. I've also got my website that kind of captures everything, including my videos, Instagram account, and links to things that I've purchased and reviewed on this channel. Now, I've also got my Kofi account, and if you've already bought me a coffee and Kofi, thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. Every penny counts. And if you're about to, thank you very much. Well, with that being said, let's continue. Now that I've got the cargo box off of the car, I can show you the roof rack up close and dismantle it to show you how it actually attaches to the roof rails of my car. Now, before I get into that, I want to let you know that there are different options available depending on the budget and what you want to do. Now, I wanted something that was aerodynamic, so I opted for aluminum roof rails that are very smooth shaped, but you can get less expensive metal and uh, square bars and uh, that'll fit a different budget. Now, I opted for something that was aerodynamic. These are the Wing Bar Evo 118. That's 118 centimeters. I'll put that in inches up here on the screen because they are designed to fit on my car and not protrude too far from the sides. So when you get in and out, you don't smack your head on them. Now, the Wing Bar is shaped like a wing of a plane, meaning that it slips through the air and is very low wind resistance as compared to something that's rectangular and also has a bit less noise considering it's an electric car that already doesn't make very much noise when you're driving it. I didn't want these square bars whistling in the wind or anything, so these were my choice. There is another model that's very similar to this from this company that actually has the feet, which is the next thing I'm going to talk about, that actually fit onto the side. Now, I went with these just because, well, that's what I found, and I'll get to that a little bit later. The base is the next part. These are podium feet. These are the 460R. The 460R is a base that fits into the bottom track of the wing bar Evo. And that's not the only thing. There are two more bits to this. The second bit is the lock. Now that's this cover here that has a key lock, which is sold as an option. Now, obviously I wanted to secure my rack so that nobody could take it. So I got those covers with the key locks. And the last part, and this is the part that will change depending on the car that you have, it's the fit kit. Now the fit kit is a metal bracket that goes inside the podium foot and latches on to the roof rail of your car. If you don't have a roof rail on your model of vehicle, it's possible that this company has a fit kit that'll actually latch on to the side of the roof. 
Now there are lots of cars that are like this. Actually, my sister-in-law bought a Thule roof rack and they don't have roof rails and they got the fit kit that clamps onto the side of the roof of the car. So depending on the vehicle you've got and depending on if you've got rails or not, there should be an option. You can check out what they've got on the website. I'll put a link to the website down below. You type in the year, the model, the make of your car and it'll bring out the options that are for your vehicle. So now let me show you the parts that this roof rack is comprised of. There are a few pieces and I will put all of the part numbers in the description below as well as a link to the manufacturer's website so you can find out what these are. Now this will fit any Kia Niro regardless of whether it's a hybrid, plug-in hybrid, gas or electric. And let me start with the first thing that you have to do if you want to take this apart is this little end cap of the wing bar has a little button on the bottom. It's actually a little clip that you press so you can unclip it from the end. Now this podium foot slides into the bar in a little uh, slot that's here because it's got a little T on the top that holds it in place. I'll put that aside now. The next thing is this locking cover. Use the key that comes with it. Unlock, pull away. And I'll put that here. And the next thing is the actual fit kit that's designed for the roof rail of the car. Now this fit kit is the one for the Nero and I'll show you how it connects and how it clamps on. There's a little rubber pad at the bottom and there's these two little armatures that basically clamp down on the roof rail. It's all held in with one bolt that is going through the podium foot into a metal bar that's behind the podium foot. There's no way this is coming off unless you've got the key and a tool to take it apart, and it's not a standard bolt. Once that's loose enough, and you slide this whole thing off, and there you go. So this is the back half of the podium foot with the fit kit, which is this piece here. If I undo this bolt completely from that bar in the back, it can separate. Now, this is the podium foot with that metal bar. And this is the fit kit that's designed for the Nero. Now, this fit kit here has the rubber foot and you can see, I don't know if it'll focus on that. It basically clamps onto the roof rails and holds it all into place. One thing that you might notice when you look at this is it's got this rubber thing covering a T-track on the top. There are some accessories that can slide into this and tighten down like a bike rack or a kayak rack, any other accessory that's designed for the wing bar Evo. So it's an ingenious little design that makes a lightweight and solid uh, roof rack. Now let me show you how it goes back on. The first thing to do is to get the bolt started into the metal pin that's in the back of the podium. Once that's on, then you slide the top, which actually, let me show this to you here. Once I screw this down and it presses on this, uh, this fit kit, it'll actually spread these here into the T, which makes the whole thing get tightened down. Now something that's very important, what I was instructed to do when you install the roof rack on your car, you want the rails to be as wide apart as possible. One thing to note is on the Nero, these curved parts that are at the back and front end of the car are actually made of plastic. They're not designed to hold any kind of real weight or have any real pressure on them. So you want to make sure that you're on the metal part and not go past the line that you have here that shows you the delineation between the metal and the plastic parts. It'll be the same for the front of the car. Once you've got it lined up and it's on the metal part of the rail, make sure that both parts are properly seated front and back. Once that's done, then you can tighten it down. Once it's tightened down, put the end cap back on, take the locking part of the podium foot,
and you're done. To reinstall the cargo box on the car, it's the same two-person operation, but with the things done in reverse from what I showed you earlier. Here's a clip of me and my son putting it back on the car. The thing that's going to be really important is the pincers have to be centered over the bars on the roof. You want to make sure that when you tighten the pincers down, that each side of the claw clamps on to the bar at the same time so there's no pressure more on the front or the back. And that's it. Once it's secured and tightened down, you're done. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, but I didn't get into details of, is that yes, I purchased this cargo box and this roof rack with my own money. What I didn't mention is that I bought it used. Now, I like to buy things that are as new and used on a website called Kijiji, and I am not associated with being paid by or sponsored by them at all. But it's a website I like to use to help reduce my consumerism. If I can find something that's as new and save some money, it's good for everybody. Now, this kit that I purchased in the Thule Canadian website is $1,350 Canadian plus tax. I paid $850, no tax because it's a used product. I wanted to say a big thank you to all of you who subscribed to my channel so far because I haven't been on YouTube for two years yet. That's actually coming up in the month of June. But I'm already at over 7,000 subscribers. That is a fantastic thing for me. It really shows that you like what I make and makes me want to make more content. So thank you very much for having subscribed to my channel. Now, speaking of subscriptions, when I look at my analytics, I notice that there's only 25% of you that watch my videos that are actually subscribed. If you come to my channel and watch my videos and then you come back to my channel and watch more of them, I would really appreciate if you could consider clicking on that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that notification bell because I don't really have a posting schedule and I post when I can and if you don't want to miss those videos, having the notification bell on lets you get advised. Now, if you like this video, please consider clicking on that thumbs up button. It shows me that you like what I make. It also shows YouTube that you like what I make and makes them share it to more people. It's kind of like the circle of life for YouTube videos. It's a good thing. And once again, thanks for watching. You want to bring a couple extra adults and some luggage. M some. M some luggage. Nice. Welcome to Evolution. My name is Andre. Welcome. Welcome to Evolution. I got potatoes in my mouth. Of course, there's a blue jay. And what do you do if you've got an electric car that's not rated for tow? I can't speak. Welcome to Evolution. My name. Really? Now? Now the blue jay? Well, when I started to investigate to buy something for myself, it was way more complicated than I had anticipated. <laughs> well, fortunately, there are some solutions, as you can see here. But when I started to listen to a guy banging on a hammer that's definitely in the microphone. Fortunately, there are solutions, as you can see here. But when I started to look into it to get something, ah, oh, son of a. Fortunately, there are solutions, as you can see here, but when I started to look into it, it was more complicated than I had anticipated. If you want to see the car passing behind me and me starting this entire segment over, stick around. I can't believe I can't remember what I just said. The first thing I considered when I was choosing my system for my roof of my car was the size of the actual box that I wanted to purchase. Ten minutes he didn't hammer. Now I'm recording and I just press record. Hammer away. If you want skis and you want other stuff that's much longer, you're going to need to cheese. You're going to need to cheese a roof rack. One of the first things I considered when I was choosing my microphone, my microphone. <laughs> I just checked the microphone and that's what happens. Now, just before I get to showing you the details of the rack, the actual, the actual rack. Now you can do something stupid. <laughs> With the cargo box off the car, I can now show you what the rack looks like. Looks like. What the rack looks like. With the cargo box off of the car, I can now show you. I can now show you. One of the things that I didn't mention that I said I would get to, I fed, blooper. Now what that attaches to on the back of this foot, which has a T that sli slides into this, is <laughs> is this bar that I can't get off. <laughs> uh, 